mia fe.
Good afternoon, everyone. Let me just take this opportunity to welcome all of you who have taken the time to be here this afternoon as we say our farewell to Fabian. We appreciate all that came, and we want, we want to also express appreciation for all those who are watching online. At this time, let's all stand, if you will, those of you that are able to. The family, you can remain seated if you like, as we look to God in a word of prayer. Our God and our Father, we look to you today in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave his life on the cross of Calvary for us. We thank you because you are a loving God, a compassionate God, a God who cares for us so much that you sent your son to die on the cross of Calvary so we can all receive forgiveness. We thank you, Lord, that your son did not come to condemn us, to point out our ills, our sins, our shortcomings, our failures. Your word tells us, Lord, your own words. The Father sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. We thank you, Lord, that you are not about condemnation, but you're about forgiveness, extending grace and mercy. And as we gather today for this home going service for Fabian, we ask that your presence will be with us through the Holy Spirit. We ask that you will comfort the hearts of his immediate relatives, his, his loved ones, and all of us who grieve with them. Lord, when you were here, you identified with us in our grief. Your word tells us that at Lazarus' death, when you came, you were, you are the inferior first in all of our human aspects. And we are so grateful that we have such a Savior who loves us so much. So we pray your presence be with us. Grant that what will be done today will bring comfort to the family. 
and we bring glory to you. Yes, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You want to sing that song? That hymn, The Old Rugged Cross. I invite you to sing along if you can. We thank God for that old rugged cross. That cross is the defining factor for every human being born into this world. The Bible says that we brought nothing into this world and we can carry nothing out physically. But because of the cross of Jesus Christ, we can live and die and leave this world with a hope that is sure because of Jesus' death on the cross of Calvary. I can't speak for you, but today I thank God for Calvary. And there are millions around the world that because of Calvary, we live in hope. At this time, we're going to have the scripture reading done by Torian Lewis Bess.
And regarding this question, friends, this has come up. What about what happens to those already dead and buried? We don't want you to think or be in the dark any longer. First of all, you must not carry on on over them like people who have nothing to look forward to, as if the grave were the last word. Since Jesus died and broke loose from the grave, God will certainly bring back to life those who died in Jesus. And then this, we can tell you with complete confidence, we have the Master's word on it, that when the Master comes again to get us, those of us who are still alive will not get jump. Those of us who are still alive will not get a jump on the dead and leave them behind. And not your fact, they'll be ahead of us. The master himself will give a command. Our angel thunder. God's trumpet blast. He'll come down from heaven and the dead in Christ will rise. They'll go first. Then the rest of us who are still alive at that time will be caught up with them into the clouds to meet the Lord in the ear. He ends the reading. At this time we're going to have the eulogy. This is being done by Tori. Good afternoon, Fabian Michael Bess was born to Maurice and Yvonne Bess on July the 14th, 1962. He was the sixth of ten children. Unfortunately, he is the second of the ten children to pass, and he will be joining his dad and his eldest brother, his elder brother. Due to his love of the Lord, the church, and the way how he embodied Christianity, Fabian would come to be affectionately known as preacher by his family, members, and those within the church. He found a second family in the Church of God of Prophecy who would be his extended family. In his formative years, he would spend so much time at the church that it felt as if he was only home for a shower and to sleep. He would be at church every chance he got. Um, sorry, he would be at church every chance he could get before he started working with his shift system um, while he was doing security. However, he stayed in contact with members of the church. He had many close and lasting friendships in the church. Fabian was the cornerstone of support for his family and was always available whenever and wherever he was needed. He might not have been rich with money, but he sure was rich with love and time. He would go above and beyond the call of duty, not only to help family members, but also to anyone that he could help. He was a fierce defender of protecting everyone, and this could be seen with his ability to be present for family in their time of need, and also to become a peacemaker in times of disturbances. Fabian was happy-go-lucky and lived for today, as she knew all too well that tomorrow was not promised to anyone. Despite the fact that he was not living on the family compound, he would hitch a ride or walk to get to his family if anyone needed his assistance. Fabian had a big heart and would place the needs of others before him, and most times, he would leave up himself. He would give the shirt off his back if he could to anyone who wanted it, and then turn to his family members for help. 
Even though he did not have any children of his own, he was still a father figure to his nieces and nephews, and did not fear to correct or discipline them when it was needed. He was forever Uncle Fabian. Fabian was a very dependable individual and could be counted on by family to be there to give support in their time of need. The same could be said where his friends were concerned. He was very hardworking, never without a job, and also a very dedicated employee who would not miss a day of work unless it was absolutely necessary. He was a very faithful employee who was always punctual and was seen as a very dependable employee. He was known for his kindness and covering of co-workers if they were not able to make it into work on time. God gives every human being a talent in their lifetime, even though some people might not discover theirs right away, but Fabian's talent from God was his voice for singing. He had a beautiful and strong voice that he could switch from bass to soprano comfortably. Fabian surely could carry a tune. Just a year ago, he single-handedly led the singing at the funeral of his nephew, Deshaun. And he knew the words to every song by heart and did not need the use of a hymnal. The last song we recall, the last song we recall you singing loudly was You Will Miss Me When I Am Gone. The sad thing is, is that the family misses him before he was gone. As his health started to fail. It is hard to know that your family or friends can no longer depend on you to be the peacemaker or run to their rescue when they need it. You had a lot of people depending on you and they will surely miss you. Please know that you will forever remain in everyone's heart, thoughts and prayers. God has called you home to sing with the angels and bell out the tunes that you learned by heart while here on earth. The church has always been a foundation and grounding in Fabian's life. He had many positive experiences with the Church of the God of Prophecy as he was able to travel several times to other Caribbean islands. This was a special highlight in his life and he looked forward to those trips. He was the first person in his family to travel through the Caribbean. He loved church so much and made many lasting friendships and also created an extended family in church members. You have earned your wings. As Christians, we cannot question why God chose Fabian at this age, but as his memory lingers in our hearts, let us remember him by thinking of his smile, his positive way of life, and his charm. He brought us all here today to celebrate his life, family, friends, strangers, and the community, let us, choose, let us use this occasion to reflect on our own lives, to stand in unity and love. Fabian, today, as we say goodbye to you in this earthly form, please know that you are and always will be loved as you hold a special place in our hearts. Go sing with the angels and join that heavenly choir and serenade the skies, sorry, and serenade from the skies. Sleep in peace and rise in glory until we meet again. Thank you, Torian. If there any of you here can confirm those things that were said in the eulogy, can you just say amen? I can see Fabian dancing now. If he was alive and we had a service here, I could see him dancing, singing, shouting. The memories that we hold of him be very, very fond. And we want to thank the Lord for him. We can sing joy unspeakable. I believe that he is experiencing that joy now. After all the suffering is over, the last time we visited him, just a few weeks before he passed, I went to encourage him. He ended up encouraging me. <laughs> I went to say things to kind of boost his spirit. He in turn boosted mine. And when I left, 
I left feeling what we're going to sing now. That joy unspeakable and full of glory, the half has never yet been told. And that's what we spent our last conversation talking about, the joy that comes by knowing Christ. I invite all of you to join us and sing this song now, Joy Unspeakable, which I know would have been is one of his favorites. <laughs> had had a chance to tell you if he knew he was going home, he would tell you when you come to my service, I want to sing. I want to shout. I want to dance. Hallelujah. And we want to thank the Lord for the joy he gives us. I worked with Fabian for many, many years, and I can see him, you know, dancing, shouting, rejoicing, giving God thanks. And today I am certain that he will want us not to be you know, discouraged, or the last time I talked to him, he was so upbeat, he was so positive, he was so excited. I left there feeling, boy, it's good to see a young man in spite of the challenges that he might have gone through, being anchored so much in the Lord Jesus Christ. When the preparations were being made for this homegoing service, Before I was asked to conduct the service and to share the word in this home going service, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. So when Barbara called me, I already knew ahead of her to the Holy Spirit that I would be the one given the opportunity to speak on Fabian's behalf. And to lay him to rest. I turned to my wife and I said, the Holy Spirit already spoke to me and told me, you will be the one to carry the service for him. And I see it as a real privilege and a real treasure. I want to share a few thoughts with all of you that are alive because Fabian can't hear one thing I'm saying. And this is the word the Holy Spirit gave me to say to all of you that I've met today and those of you who are watching us very technology. The Lord gave me a word 
to share with you, and I trust it will challenge you. And this is the thought I want to leave with you. Let me tie the death of the righteous and let my end be like his. Let me die the death of the righteous and my last end be like his. That is found in Numbers chapter 23, verse 10. And one thing is certain, the scripture makes it abundantly clear. See, oh, millionaire, politician, whoever, peasant. It's appointed unto man wants to die. So all of us have an appointment with death. I heard a story of the boy that there was a man from St. Peter who went to bridge down and I don't know if I got the story right, but it was told death looking for you in bridge down. He might say, all right, but I leave in bridge down. No, I headed for north. And he ran to spike down. Trying to get away from death. When he, when he arrived in spike down, death came and said, I was waiting for you. <laughs> he thought he could run away. The, 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 just learn that story is that none of us can't run away from death. Called Williams of all of his millions and all the companies he owned and all the achievements he's made was laid to rest a couple of days ago. His companies, his money, his status in society could not tell death go back. And that's one thing we all share in common. All of us, if the Lord tarry, will die. I will not say everyone will die because the, the reality is that when Christ comes, the scripture said, those of us who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. So, a lot of us are going here. And there are some signs that are very, very indicative of the fact that Jesus Christ is coming soon. I don't know what Bible prophecy you know. But if you know Bible prophecy as I do, you will know that the coming of Christ is imminent. But I'm not going to ask to be in the end of 2021. Or 2022 March. Some people have tried that. But the Bible says that no man knows the day, nor the hour, not even the sun. That's one bit of information the Father has kept back from his son. Although in the in the unity of the Trinity, they are all one or equal, yet the Father has kept back that information. So Jesus said, not even the Son. When the appointed time comes, the Father will say to his son, Go get your children. I will not tell what to happen after he gets his children from here. You should probably come and visit us at church or ask me for his Zoom number. Then we are talking about that so I can give a good insight of what's going to happen after he left. You know what? Just as a lot of us are going to be alive when he comes, the world will still be rolling on as usual, and billions of people are going to be alive. How many will go with him? Only God knows. But quite a lot of people left here to go to what we call the Great Tribulation period. But that is a subject for another time. But all of us are appointed to death. But this declaration here is let me die. Since I'm appointed to death, I don't want to die anyhow. When death comes, let me die the death of the righteous. The opposite of that is unrighteous. So, this declaration was, I don't want to die in an unrighteous state. I don't want the death to find me in an unrighteous condition. I want that when death seizes on me, that I die the death of the righteous, and I want my last end to be like his. This was spoken by a man called BLM. If you read Numbers 23, you will find that his character wasn't too good. He was a shady guy. His character wasn't too good. He was one of those prophets that could be bought for money. Whatever you want, you pay him to say, he will say. Unfortunately, there's some of that today. I said, unfortunately, they'll tell you what you want to hear. 
and they are locked to they are telling people everything they want to hear except bringing them face to face with the reality that there's coming a time sooner or later when you will face death. And therefore, you ought to do what is necessary so that when death finds you, no matter where you run, you, it does not find you in an unrighteous state. I will not go into the background of this man called BLM. You can check for yourself. But he was hired to curse the church of Israel. And the king, BLM, give a lot of money. A man told me one time, money makes the mere fly. I won't call his name because some of you knew him. But we had a contractual arrangement to use the facility he had. And when he went to make the payment after we made a contract, he said, well, Mr. Payne, I'm sorry. You're not getting facility again because somebody came and offered me more. So your contract going through the door. I said, but sir, I'm principal. That's not right. He said to me, money makes the mayor fly. Some people find that you're the trap in that. And that money will make the mayor fly. But no amount of money can cover your sins. No amount of money can make you right in the sight of God. No amount of money can make you a righteous person. And I thank God he made that way. Because if money could do that, as we said, if salvage was a thing that money could buy, the rich would live, and the poor, like many of us here, would die. But thank God that God sent his only begotten son that all we have to do is to believe. And so, I know that Fabian would have had his challenges like all of us have. We have had his ups and his downs. And those of you who do have ups and downs in life, the only ones that fit that category are those who are in the dead, in the under earth. But if you are alive, challenges will come, difficulties will come. And you know what? All of us are prone to challenges. All of us struggle with things, all of us have issues. And sometimes we human beings, we are quick to point our finger in condemnation at others. The Bible says that God did not send his son to condemn anybody. But we human beings, we like to point fingers, we like to condemn, we like to speculate. We can see the faults in everybody else. And like Jesus said, sometimes we can see the more in people's eye, but we can't see the beam in our own eye. And now if you are blinding when it comes to us, or we can see the faults in others. I want to say this evening, all of us need the Lord. All of us need God's grace. Jesus Christ died for all of us. And the, why he died is to give all of us an eternal hope. Romans 3, 23 puts it succinctly. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And those of us that feel that we are special and I don't curse and I don't do this and we can list all the things that we don't. The Bible says not because of works of righteousness that we have done, but there's none righteous, no, not one. So the Bible gives one commonality. All of us were born in sin and shared with iniquity. But Romans 6, 23 tells us the wages of sin is death. And death in this sense means eternal separation from God. Because even Christians die physically. In fact, there are three deaths. But Adam sinned. He was separated from God. That relationship was broken. He underwent spiritual death. When we die physically, as happened with Fabian, there is physical death. But the book of Revelation tells me there's another death, an eternal death. And it says in the final chapter of Revelation, and the books were opened, and another book, and God's account keeping is accurate to the T. The books are open, and another book, and all whose names were not from written in the book of life were cast into a lake of fire and brimstone which is the second death first death in Eden natural death different times to different people and the second death 
It's eternal separation from God. And people say that God is too loving and God will not judge and all that. The world can say what it likes. The Bible tells us to position. And so because all of us has sinner come short, God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross of Calvary, that whatever our shortcomings are, we all can die the death of the righteous if we choose to. And God has given everyone free choice. Some governments are sending soldiers to arrest people and to give them the job. Australia is probably the most renowned example of a country where people want a job and they're sending military out to random people to beat them up and jab them because they say, I have the right of choice. I don't want it. The government said, right to choice. How dare you? God is not like that. God has made us with free will. And God will never violate that. And so Paul said one time that before when men did not understand God's will and God's purpose and God's plan and why God sent Jesus, God winked because God gave people a little break because they weren't too clear. But now God commands all men everywhere. Black men, white men, yellow men, brown men, poor men, rich men, educated men, uneducated men, and men in this context mean both genders. God commands all men everywhere to repent. All repentance means is to acknowledge, yes, Lord, we are born in sin. We are shaped in iniquity. Please forgive us for Jesus' sake. And every person that does that sincerely experiences what is called a new birth. And because of Christ's death on the cross, we are made right before God. God accepts our repentance on the basis of what Christ did on the cross. And when we do that, that makes us right before God or what the Bible calls righteous. So the theme I said, let me die the death of the righteous. Righteous means acting or living in accord or in agreement with God's divine law, God's moral law, or it means morally right or justified in righteous decision. When a sinner comes to Christ, even if he's a thief, even if he's guilty of sedition and a thief on the cross, God does not register our sins, but anyone, boy, girl, man, or woman, that will come to God and say, Lord, forgive me of my sins, God forgives them instantly. Their sins are cast in the sea of forgetfulness. God operates even to us. Because we remember the things that we did that weren't right. The things we said that weren't right. But because of what Christ did on the cross, when we ask God's forgiveness, God blots out all of our sins and they are remembered no more by God, although you might remember them. And that's what righteousness is. Because of Christ's death on the cross, I accept him as Savior and Lord, God transfers to us the righteousness of Christ so that we are right with him. Praise be to God. Isaiah 54, 70 said, Your righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. And so we can't make ourselves right. We can't do anything physically to make ourselves right before God. And God knew that. So he sent Christ to die. And so when we ask the Lord to forgive us because of what Christ did on the cross, God accepts us. Romans, 1 Corinthians 1, 30 said, But of ye, of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. All of these are found in the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you, like Fabian, like many of us, but recognize that you need Christ as a savior. I tell you, I ain't so smart to think I can get just like before him. And many that thought they had money and wealth and influence, all that, before 2019, discovered, boy, this world ain't as secure as we think it is. The money that I have really can't do certain things. And you know what? 
the coronavirus, and I'm not going to fight coronavirus, but it has taught the world that the only thing that is stable, the only thing that is guaranteed in this world is nothing. But I can tell you that hope which comes from knowing Jesus Christ, that is guaranteed. And so my brother, my friend, my neighbor, all those hear me, whether here at Christ Church Cemetery or online, if you would commit like Fabian did, and ask the Lord Jesus Christ to forgive you, you have troubles, yes. Matter of a woman is full of trouble. I have a short time to live. But in our short time, praise God, we can live with hope and confidence in God because we made Jesus Christ our choice. So through Jesus Christ, we are mere righteous or we are mere right before God. You think what we mean? Right in the sight of God. And Jesus Christ does that for us. So sit me to a relationship with him. We are accepted by God. So the man made a declaration. Let me die. I know I'm going to die. But let me die the death of the righteous. And let my last end be like his. Hallelujah. That was his resolve. What will yours be? He said, let me die the death of the righteous. I'm going to ask you a question. What kind of death do you want to die? You want to die sooner or later? We have to die in an unrighteous state, not knowing Christ is the Savior. If God has already made a provision. You see how with COVID, somebody tried to make a vaccine? And I'm told that the vaccine has this percentage of potency and that percentage of potency. And at first, they fooled us. Because they take the first two shots and you're good. Now here some countries got men to shot because in some cases, after a couple months, they, they, you have to get another one to boost up your other one. <laughs> Thank God Jesus Christ died once and for all. Can somebody tell me amen? You don't have to die every day. He died once and for all. And what he, the price he paid on the cross of Calvary is a, a price that guarantees us eternal salvation. And so his blood is what we call efficacious. The vaccine is efficacious, 85%, some 90%, and some declining percentages. Never 100%. But I can tell as I close to the end, one thing on earth, glory to God, available to all human beings. That's 100% efficacious. Isaiah said, though his sins be as scarlet, they shall be as well. They be like crimson, they shall be as white as snow, because of the efficacious, ever cleansing, delivering, transforming blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is what gave Fabian hope. And I spoke him the last time I stopped him. We talked together. He testified. We sang. But he sang. I can't really sing. You know, they kept crazy. Then. <laughs> but he sang and we prayed. And I know you are out of this life with a hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. Every one of us can. All we have to do is to make him our choice. So I conclude by quoting the words again. Let me die the death of the righteous and let my last end be like his. See, I worked together in church planting many years. The church had no pastor. Maybe went to establish that church. He was my right hand support. I could sing then, still can't sing. I got to get heaven to sing. But he was sing. He would help in so many ways. And occasionally had other ministry appointments. I could rely on Fabian 100% to be there to keep things. Every time our mission teams, you would always be there, always involved, always active, very humble, always willing to do whatever you can to help. When others were timid, he would come forward. And I'm glad that God gave him a life that he could make a good contribution to the kingdom of God. And I want to register this for the record today that we in the Church of God's Prophecy, we want to acknowledge his tremendous contribution to the work of the Church of God, both here in Barbados and across the region. And I thank God that he died with this hope 
and uh, he he understood. Though he did not know when death would come, he made sure that things were in place that if death should come his way, he could die the death of the righteous. The last thing he said to me is that I have to go back to a doctor to get a check on my left foot. I do not know what the outcome will be, but what I know, whatever the outcome, my trust and my confidence is in the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank God for his testimony. He has certainly left a legacy for us. Let boy heads as we pray. Our Father, we thank you that through Jesus Christ, your Son, we can all die the death of the righteous if you only choose you. I pray for his co-workers today who so graciously came to pay their last respects. I pray for his relatives, his immediate relatives, the extended family who came today to say a farewell to him. I thank you for all the supporters that are here today. I want to thank you for all those who are on Facebook or YouTube or whatever, or all the, the technological platforms that this house is being carried. I thank you all of us, like him, can live in his of all challenges, can hold on to you, trust in your finished work in Calvary, and die the death of the righteous. We are worried to challenge those of us who have not yet made that choice to choose Christ, to choose to be made right with God, not with our own deeds, but through the provision you made for only through Christ's death can we be made justified and made right. We pray for our comfort and strength and support for the relatives. We know, Lord, that you are able to sustain. And my prayer to you, Father, this evening, in Jesus' name, that you will give the family grace and strength and courage equivalent to their degree of loss and pain and sorrow. This I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God bless you. We are going to sing a final song. We'll understand it better by and by. Lots of things you don't understand now. By and by.
Flesh shall perish and return again unto the dust, and the dust shall return to the earth as it was, but the spirit shall return to God who gave it. Therefore we commit this body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, awaiting the glorious return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who has come with power and great glory. Then shall the earth and the sea give up those who sleep in Christ, who shall be changed and merely unto his glorious body, according to working whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which join the Lord from henceforth, yea, save the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works. Do follow them. You want to sing it this time? In the sweet by and by. Who 
our bountiful Father above. He will offer our tribute of praise for the glorious gift of His love and the blessings that hallow our days. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sweet by and by, by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. We shall meet on that beautiful shore. I would like you to join in singing now as we run out some again. And if you are a child of God, help us sing. Praise the Lord. Your sweetness coming for us. Have it, have it, it is, but thank God because of Jesus Christ. There's a land that is brighter than day, and by faith we can see it afar. For the Father waits over the way. To prepare us a dwelling place there In the sweet by and by We shall meet on that beautiful shore In the sweet by and by We shall meet on that beautiful shore We shall sing on that beautiful shore the melodious songs of the blessed And our spirits shall sorrow no more Not a sigh for the blessing of rest In the sweet by and by and by We shall meet on that beautiful shore by and by In the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore. You are bountiful, Father. tribute of praise for the glorious gift of his love and the blessings that hallow our days in the sweet by and by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore In the sweet by and by and by We shall meet on that beautiful shore In the sweet by and by and by We shall meet on that beautiful shore We shall meet on that beautiful shore that we are singing our favorite hymns. We've chosen them because his favorite. Next one is on page seven. Then the roll is full up yonder. I'll be there. Again, feel free to clap and sing along.
heaven will be on page 8. When we all get to heaven. Here we have no continuity, but thank God. Let me live for Christ. We will be there. Praise the Lord. I want on behalf of the myself and my family and the ministry and membership of the Church of God of Prophecy, Barbados District to extend our deepest condolences to Fabian's family. We want to assure you that our prayers will continue for you, that God will sustain you at this time. Let's just go ahead as we Good benediction. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the face of the Holy Spirit be us all now and forevermore. Amen. Again, thank all of you for coming. And the family want to do a balloon release in tribute to Fabian. And I look forward to seeing this as well.
my soul so weary when troubles come and my heart burdened be then I am still and wait here in the silence until you come and sit Just a prayer away. All you need to do is call. He will hear your faintest cry. He's concerned about you. So while your tears are flowing through, your time of mourning. He is here to lift your heavy heart Cause He's in love with you He knows, He cares He sees, He's there He'll carry you He's concerned But the morning will bring joy He won't give you more than you can bear He's concerned about you He loves you, oh yes He loves you, oh He loves you, I know He does concerned about you. He knows, he cares, he sees, he's there. He'll carry you. He's concerned about you. Concerned about you. He's concerned.